Coming up, we're going to keep on talking Universal Orlando, but we're also going to throw in a little Universal Studios Hollywood, and we're even going to take you to the park. So for right now, from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Universal Edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is episode 162 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I am your host, Craig Williams, and today I am joined alongside by my co-host, Mr. Rhino Clavin. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining me here today yes. on this episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. Yes. yes. <laughs> so it should be a good time. Uh, lots, lots to go over. And when I say lots to go over, of course, I'm lying. Mm-hmm. And not that much is happening right now. And uh, Rhino's been away for a while. I've been taking care of my wife, who is fresh off of having surgery. So we just haven't really had any, that much time to get into the parks and go around and explore. Obviously, we are going to a little bit in this episode. But, uh, yeah, just uh, just not that much. So I'm, I don't want to call this a filler episode, per se. But I'll just say it's not going to be jam-packed. <laughs> <laughs> You've been jammed. Yeah, um, this is me setting you up for disappointment, but Yay. hey, that's what I do best. So yeah, we're going to go over a little bit of news, take into the park later, and all that good stuff. I wish there was more to talk about, but everything else is just like, it's just rumors right now. People asking, well, when's Fast and Furious going to open up this spring? When's, yeah. when's, when, what's happening with Nintendo? That's been the whole rage right now is everyone predicting that Nintendo is going to be pushed back from being in kid zone to go to a third park. I don't know. Is that, that's, well, that's what, the, that's what's all, all a flurry, a flurry right now with everyone predicting stuff with what's going to happen with Nintendo in the future. So that's all over the message message forums, like Inside Universal, Twitter, everywhere. It's just all bouncing around. So, And here uh, I am just waiting for Voodoo Donuts. Yeah. And so we're, <laughs> you know, we, we work on a week-to-week basis with our, our thoughts and particulars on stuff. So, yeah, no, we're not going to go into any of that. But let's go ahead and jump right in with the news so the first thing since uh last show around we uh or at least the last time we recorded a show uh, the the final two performers were finally announced for universal mardi gras 2018 so uh the two gaps it were on uh sunday sorry saturday march 10th as well as saturday march 24th and we didn't know who would fill those holes, but now we know who is filling those holes. And the first person filling that hole is Jason Derulo. And uh, so he will be on that March 10th concert night that I just said. And, of course, he's known for his hits like Swalla, no. Want to Want Me, and Riding Solo. Those are weird ones to list for him. <laughs> Well, I, I like I said, I was busy taking care of Kylie, so Charles wrote this one up. So I don't know if this was just uh, if this was oh, his talk choice. Dirty. Or... Come on, you know, talk dirty to me. I, we are very open with the fact. Uh, not we. I am very open with the fact. I do not really listen to a lot of contemporary music. Get ugly. No, I, I'm sure I might be able to like in my head. You should know that one. In my head, I can see. I can't know the. I don't remember the rest of the words at this moment. See, when you sing that, all I think is, get out of my. 
<laughs> Leslie Nope's walk in music. Well, no, that's that's get off your feet. Oh, that's right. That was her. That was her. <laughs> this trail of songs that were it's falling it. down. Well, as the Olympics have been going on, we've been watching ice dancing, and I've been joking <laughs> to Kylie get that he's like, oh, well, I, I finally figured out what type of ice dancer you would be. And then I show her the clip of Leslie Nope and the entire gang walking out on the ice and just falling down. But that's neither here nor there. So Jason Derulo is filling that first hole. And then the second gap is being filled by Jesse J, as I think I already said, and she'll be performing on March 24th. So if you are unfamiliar with Jesse J, maybe that's because you're not big and hip on music like I'm not. Uh, or maybe it's because you have issues with the UK. Either either way, she is a, a British performer. Uh, I I don't care one way or another how you feel about her. Regardless, she is coming to uh, Universal, and and Charles is listing that her prominence was gained with hits like Domino, Price Tag, and Bang Bang. Yeah, I know those songs, Price Tag. Come, oh, okay, come on. I I just I honestly don't know. I don't know anymore. I just it's just I can't listen to the radio when there's so many entertaining podcasts out there and there's so much good good music that was around from before i was born that i have yet to discover like mozart beethoven bach there's a lot johann sebastian bach yeah who puts me in a good mood do you know that he that i think it was bach or maybe it was beethoven or maybe it was both had surgery on their eyes by the same person who wasn't an eye surgeon he was just a guy that lied and said he was an eye surgeon. This is about as informationally useful as when we <laughs> went over the your celestial vacation. floats. <laughs> I want you guys to remember, don't let anybody on the streets do eye surgery on you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Orlando can be a tough place. Especially if they're on like the Kirkman corner right there outside of Universal. Just, just avoid it, but... Uh, yeah, apparently they also might be building a bridge across Kirkman going to uh, right at the Major Boulevard. What? Exit. They're building a bridge. What do you think that means? It means, okay, so you know what I'm talking about. You know uh, when you get, if you're going to get on I-4, like you're leaving yeah. Universal, not going driving through property on the mm -hmm. on the side closer to like Mall at Millennia. Yeah. You know how there's the CD hotels kind of back yeah. right across from that universal intersection. Mm -hmm. They want to build a bridge across there because apparently 762 pedestrians cross that road a day. Jeez. And so I bet they're just running out across the street too. Well, I've never had that problem and I've never felt like traffic backed up on this section just because of pedestrians crossing the street, but Universal wants to do it anyway. So, hey, we're bringing trip planning back into this. If you're planning on staying at one of those hotels, I almost call them hell holes, which that's essentially what they are right in that area. Just joking. Book that area. Don't book that area. Stay on site. Uh, but maybe one day you'll have a bridge to cross over if you ever do stay there. But yeah, so those are the final two performers for Universal Mardi Gras, as we said. So the full list is out there. You know, we talked about it. Stuff like Macklemore coming up, Philip Phillips, 311, uh, Fifth Harmony, Bush, Jesse J. I. Personally, I know you weren't able to go. You were traveling in Milwaukee, as we already said, but mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to see the Beach Boys this past Saturday night with John Stamos. And and while you did that, I watched the episode of Law & Order he was on, yeah. so it was like we were watching the same thing, right? Yeah, it was... I, I will be honest, I and I guess we'll use this as a little bit of a tangent, uh, you know, not time filler at all, nothing like that, but... When Mardi Gras is good, Mardi Gras is really good. In the Beach Boys, that was like a night where it was just completely excellent. Everything about it, everyone there that was waiting for the concert was super excited. They were super pumped and into it. Whether, you know, some of them were there solely for the Beach Boys. I would say 90% of the people there, though, were solely there for John Stamos, which good on, good on them for coming out to support, uh, even though they only wanted to see the one person. But... Uh, I, there was just some kind of energy there that hasn't been present for a lot of the Mardi Gras, uh, especially the concerts that I've attended in recent years. This this felt 
like a truly big celebration that everyone was getting into. And uh, it, it's kind of sad in a way because uh, as of the day that we're recording this, this is on Monday, uh, Mardi Gras, technically Mardi Gras is a long event, but Fat Tuesday is tomorrow. <laughs> oh, shoot. And uh, yeah, yeah. What are we supposed to do for that? Uh, we're just going to be, we're going to exist. I it's like know. you drink a lot on that day, don't you? Uh, it's technically, it's your last day of like filling up and everything because then oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Wednesday is Ash Wednesday and you begin. I can't believe it's Ash Wednesday and Easter's not till like April 1st. It, it's not that far away if you genuinely think about it. So I guess. It, it's not, but yeah, so we have Fat Tuesday tomorrow as of when we're recording this. So technically that is the end of Mardi Gras is on Tuesday, yet we still have, you know, there's only been two concerts at that point. There's still one, uh, you know, there's still a full month of mm-hmm. Mardi Gras, over a month of Mardi Thank Gras goodness. concerts. What, what I think they should do, and I know they're not going to listen to me. They've been doing this for years. I wish the summer concert series would come back. I know. I liked that a lot. I, you know, it's, but that was back when they needed filler for Universal Studios Florida. It was the, a lot under construction. It was it was under construction, and it was just the lesser park back then. I don't yeah. want to, you know, I miss stuff like Jaws and, and a lot of the classic attractions, uh, but they just weren't as popular. As soon as Diagon Alley opened up, you no longer needed an excuse to, sorry, that was weird. You no longer needed an excuse to get people in that park, like the summer concert series during the summer. People were starting to migrate over from islands to spend time there so you don't need that event anymore so without that the only thing that i could think of that would make more sense celebration of harry potter happens that last weekend in january into the first weekend of february why not take that move it to the end of march and start mardi gras like the second week of january yeah and just let that run until the end of february so that way Really, you know, it's it's actually closer to the real Mardi Gras celebration times. And then you can get more excitement. Because, like, even watching the parade from where the concert area was, people were going nuts on the parade. But I think about it, and in another three weeks from now, Mardi Gras is long gone, but the event's still running at Universal. How do you get excited for an event that's technically over? Yeah. I know, that, I know this happens every year, but, I mean... At what point is someone going to like sit down and be like, you know what, this doesn't make sense. We have this Harry Potter event that we plan right at the end that could be prime Mardi Gras time, getting people to come in. But, hey, that's just my thoughts on it. One thought. I, I, have... I, I do want to uh, correct a misstatement I made earlier. What? It was about the Sebastian Bach. I hate to go back oh. to it. But it was Handel and not Beethoven, and it was Bach, and the man was John T- Taylor. He was a charlatan mm. oculist, and that's that's what killed him eventually. Anyway. Hoity-toity. Yes, yes. Mm. Just because, you know, people love to correct us, so I have to make sure I find the correct information before the show's over, because I don't really want to get into it otherwise. Yeah. So. <laughs> hey, the sad part is, too, when we're wrong about stuff in the theme parks, we never correct ourselves on it. No, Yet I when know. it's useless information that is just inserted in a show, that's when we're going to actually take the time to correct ourselves of on course. it. So that's that Mardi Gras news like I was talking about. The next thing I want to jump into, it's Universal Studios Hollywood, but uh, it's obviously something that's going to probably eventually take effect with what's happening here in Orlando. Jeez, let's and hope so. What? I said, geez, let's hope so. Oh, oh, oh. so the uh, news that I was talking about is last week, uh, Universal released a bit more details on Kung Fu Panda, The Emperor's Quest, which is going to be the new entertainment that happens at the DreamWorks Theater out in Universal Studios Hollywood. So before uh, we, we told you that when they made the announcement of the DreamWorks Theater, it was replacing Shrek 4D, and uh, it was going to be a brand new multi-sensory adventure that will take guests on a legendary journey that fuses captivating storytelling with state-of-the-art projection mapping and LED lighting effects for a highly engaging and immersive, unstoppable, awesome experience. Well, they uh, finally released a little bit more by it, so uh, just going to go over a little bit because I, I, I think it is kind of exciting. And uh, this this project, The Emperor's Quest, was produced by DreamWorks Animation, working alongside Universal Creative, which I like that they're pairing up together to actually work on this. So 
the projection mapping that they're using for this uh, is actually going to be the first ever integration of interior projection mapping, which will engulf guests in 180 degrees of immersive adventure. So, interior is, projection mapping. So, do you th- interesting? So, you think there's going to be like objects and stuff on the stage that will change or move? I I don't know. I mean. It's just we're so used to, when we think of projection mapping, we're so used to thinking now it's happening on objects, whether it's a castle yeah. at Universal or Disney or if a it's cake. on a... <laughs> I've seen it on a wedding cake before. Yeah, no, I know. That's that's one of the ways you can get a wedding cake at Disney is they will do the projections on the cake so you don't have to pay for the big customizations and stuff. But uh, we're so used to seeing projections on, you know either tangible objects or big scale outdoor objects. It, 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 you know, you really, the more you think about it, it's like, I haven't ever seen it utilized indoors. Like they're going to with that. So I, I think it, in theory, it, it definitely sounds, it sounds interesting, especially with the 180 degrees of, of, uh, immersive adventure, as they're saying, that's, uh, I, I like, I like, I don't like 360 movies per se because you can't really take in the entire thing, but I enjoy a good 180 degree film or at least experience that really you have to constantly be looking around it. That's uh, while there were many bad things about Terminator, that was part of it that I did enjoy that there was always something to look around side to side. Uh, so the, the plot is going to be on the morning of the emperor's great feast of heroes, dragon warrior Poe embarks on a wild and perilous mission to deliver the rare and precious liquid of limitless power to the palace while enlisting guests to join him on the exciting adventure filled with raging rapids, river pirates, awesome magic, and Kung Fu, of course. Obviously. He's a Kung Fu panda. There has to be Kung Fu. I only saw the first one. So I've only seen the first and second. The second one, the second one's good too. It's just it's not as funny as the first one. It's a little more dramatic, and that took me for a loop a little bit. But I was like obsessed with the first one when it came out because I was blown away by how much I liked it. Oh, see, I remember just thinking, oh, um, okay, it's it's this. It's a good story. It's a good circular story. I like how everything comes around in the end. I like the message. I like all this stuff. Yeah, I, with it. I like. I like. I was also like. I feel like that came out around Jack Black's like real yeah kind of he was still on fire kind of there at the he was like right after Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny or not right after but it was within a couple of years and so it was like everybody knew who Jack Black was now and stuff I, and I think that was part of the thing that skewed me I, I do need to give this another chance go back and rewatch it because I think at the time I was too skewed this was one of the the first prime examples of for me where they were casting a voice that just I don't think actually fit the character. Oh really? Like, See, I thought Jack Black is the perfect voice for Poe, but I, I, but I, think I don't you'd have to maybe you have to give it another shot like you're yeah, saying. It, it's hard. Sometimes you look at it and like when I hear him it's he didn't try to do anything different. It's Jack Black playing Jack Black. And in this case, Jack Black happens to be a panda. So that was my yeah. that was my issue with that. You know, with with Shrek, love it or hate it. Mike Myers actually tried to do something with it and he gave it his his Scottish accent but I mean we've all I think everyone's seen the the test clips for when Chris Farley was doing the voice work for Shrek and it was I a have complete not. You have not. No, I'm going to look that up after yeah, this. Yeah, it's they had the rough animation done. He was supposed to be Shrek and then he wow. passed away I, it's, and it's kind of dumbfounding to me that Shrek was in production that far ago, that long ago. Yeah, I mean it's the movie, what, that released in 99? No. 97? It, I was in high school, so it was definitely in 2000s. Was it 2000s? Yeah. 2001? That, it would have it, it, it might have been 2000, or it might have been 2000. I thought Actually, it was 2001. Actually, it might have been 2001. Yeah. Because yeah. I think it was, I was in like 10th grade, I want to say. I was in 10th or 11th grade, so that would be like 2001. Yeah. My animated movies took a long time, especially back then with computer oh, animation, yeah. when it wasn't, it was all still very new, you know, that Pixar was making them. But that was yeah, that was of DreamWorks that was the first. I think it was their first big one. It was it was DreamWorks' first big CGI movie. I mean, they had before. Uh, oh, they did the robot, robot one. Never mind. I think that was before that. The robot, the one with Ewan McGregor and uh, Robin Williams. 
Um, because you that mean one, the movie Robots? Yeah, is that what it's called? The Robots? Yeah, just not robots? the ro- just Robots. The Robots. That one. was after Shrek. Robot. Okay, that was, was after oh, Shrek. Okay, and All was right. that even DreamWorks? I thought that was like Fox Animation. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it was. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. But regardless, regardless, yeah. Before that, DreamWorks first. I mean, their first big hit as an animation company, I believe, was um, the Prince of Egypt. And then mm. they also had wasn't a big hit, but it was very prominent. Uh, Road to El Dorado. Because right, okay, so Elton Shrek John was their first the, like 3D animation, yeah, 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 exactly, okay. that makes sense, yeah. So, I mean, that's neither here nor there. Besides, I do need to go back and watch Kung Fu Panda, all three of them, and get acquainted with the stories because I, I am excited for this change out in Hollywood and uh, the fact that they're taking the effort to put in, in all these uh, all these great new effects into a show. Like, I, I hope that starts to translate over into Orlando with what's happening here. On the one hand, I, I you know, I, I would enjoy there being uh, distinct differences between the parks. So, but I, that doesn't mean that technology can't be shared. I don't want the exact same experience, but I want similar, similar designs used. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's what I, before... Are you hoping we get the How to Train Your Dragon version of this show? I, I would love something with it like that. I mean, just looking back onto it, before Transform or bah, Transform. before Transformers came here, it was cool that we kind of had, like, we had a Spider-Man on mm-hmm. our coast, and then out there, they had, out there, and then in Asia, they had Transformers. Yeah. So, same style, but just completely used two different ways, and then we got it here, too, and... You know, that story's been written, but I like the idea of sharing technology, sharing the designs without replicating the rides yeah, I agree. entirely. When, it, when it's replicated, it almost makes it like a little cheaper when you go to visit yeah. the other park because you want to go to the other park yeah. too. You yeah. want, I want more reasons to go out to visit Universal Hollywood besides the tram tour, which yeah. that's, uh, you know, as, as time goes on, that's becoming the only thing. It's definitely after Halloween Horror Nights this past year, yeah. it's not going out for that unless they completely change things up. But I do hope that, uh, you know, there's so much happening in California this summer over at Disneyland and now Universal Studios Hollywood. So hopefully, hopefully we'll get out and have a chance to experience it. But it's it's something I know it's small and it's just a, a new show, but it's something to keep your eye on if you were thinking about uh, visiting Hollywood. This is it's going to be unique to Hollywood when it opens up so uh different different reason to give it a try if you you've been on the fence before about why not it's uh the summer definitely seems like there's lots of reasons why you should go out there but that is all i have for the the news portion of the show so i believe now rhino and i are going to go head into the theme parks and uh, do something fun from there i can't tell you what it was but you'll just have to watch and enjoy We've made it to Universal Orlando, specifically Universal Studios Florida. Rhino, where are we right outside of? The Richter Burger, as in the Richter scale, as in earthquakes, as in San Francisco. Yeah. I mean, you took that literally backwards. Oh, I should have started San Francisco. Who's uh, known yeah. for their hurricanes. I buried the lead. All right. I and just came right yeah, out. Yeah. You just came right out and said it. Yeah, that's right. We are... In San Francisco, right outside the Richter Burger Company, and we, this is one of the places we have not reviewed yet. I can confidently uh, say I've never eaten here before. <laughs> it's been like, I think, maybe once for me, and it's been a long time, so we haven't reviewed it on the show at all, so we are sacrificing yet again for a place that is often not traveled for us, in Rhino's case, never traveled, and we're going we're gonna to check it out. So, quick service location here inside Universal Studios Florida. Uh, Richter Burger Company, as he said, so their main product is burger, a little bit of like chicken, and we'll have to see the rest of the menu. Yeah, I don't know. There's what it's like pictures right now. of like one's a burger, one's a chicken, and they're pretty pictures, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, let's head inside and check this place out. Okay, so I get it, you know, it's all it's all San Francisco uh, earthquake themed stuff. So you've got like the Richter scale salad, which looks like uncooked chicken, the fault line. But I don't know that you want to name a burger the aftershock, because that sounds like a burger that's going to be with you more than once, you know. It's going to affect your tummy after you're done eating. I'm trying to say this in the most, the least diarrhea way. <laughs> So, 
so we got our items, and I cannot tell you that they look very appetizing. I'm gonna be open-minded, but mine looks burned, Craig's looks, if that's the big one, I don't know what the small one looks like. Um, but fries and the normal things, there is a topping bar that includes lettuce, onions, tomato. It is the whitest and thinnest cut lettuce I've ever seen. Um, so we're gonna go see if we can make these look better. As Rhino previously alluded to, I got the big one. It is completely going against everything on my diet right now, but uh, this is for you guys. The so last time we went to Mel's, which is serves burgers primarily, and we didn't get a burger there, it jumped down our throats. So we came to Richter Burger, that primarily serves burgers. I got a burger, it's their standard one, a cheeseburger. Uh, I will say we saw them grilling them, and they weren't like thrown on the grill already frozen. They were fresh uh, from what I could tell, but we are also looking from a bad angle uh, in the 20 long, minute long line that we waited in, which is just- The thinnest pure, line ever. Yeah, the thinnest, longest line, which is just pure bonkers. But then the complete opposite, once you get here, there is so much seating all around. Everyone stops in the main room, but there's a back area that we're literally the only people in. There's a whole outside part. It's a little too hot for that, but yeah, so that's just all been very interesting. I've got my big one. Like I said, I topped it at the Toppins Bar with everything they had, essentially. Lettuce, uh, there's a tomato under there, uh, diced onions, some pickles, and then I went with ketchup and mayonnaise. One thing that I liked, uh, they had more than that too, as Rhino will show you a condiment that they had. They also provided malt vinegar for the french fries. I tried a couple before I put malt vinegar on and they were pretty disgusting. But... I think some malt, Yeah, well and the malt vinegar does not help, but at least now they taste like vinegar instead of like bland nothingness. So, that's a nice little option, but let's go. Let's get on this burger. It is, yo, oh, just look how fake that <laughs> Processed cheese. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first bite in, I will say the bottom of the bun's a little soggy, but you know, uh, I also went to get my toppings first and Rhino went. It's a greasy burger, so I kind of expected that, so I'm not gonna fault it. I'm gonna really surprise myself here while it's cooked to an inch of its death. And it's mostly the flavor from the toppings, including the condiments. It's not half bad. This would not be my first choice, but it's not awful, but I'll keep eating, let you know. We'll let you jive in, Rhino. Try him. Try him? Mm hmm So I got the Fault Line, which is their black bean burger, listed under healthy options. I don't know if that is true or not. It is not gonna have the same problem as Craig's where my bun will get uh, soggy at all because it is it's bone dry here. But like we said, there's a condiments bar, so I got lettuce, tomato, onions on here. I ordered, you can order, um, like guac. guac, there was like two or three other options you could get, Jalapenos, I think. Jalapenos, yeah. uh, onions, and mushrooms. All for extra charge. Um, this was $1.29 and this is what came out. Also this is kind of a little brownish, but whatever. I'm putting it in here. I don't care. It's actually, it's not too bad. I'm sure it's the same guacamole they serve everywhere in property, so it comes out of some vat somewhere. Da, 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 da. Okay, here we go, I'm gonna try this. Um, so in addition to one of the other toppings that Craig mentioned too, there was actually like hot sauce up there. So I got it. I'm gonna give it a try with my french fries or something. Or we'll see how this burger goes, but. It's like what Craig said, when you take the bite, you kind of, the only flavor I'm really getting is from the guacamole, which is good. So that means it's flavorful guacamole and the like tomato and stuff, but 
the texture of this black bean burger is a little bit rough. It's a little crispier, a little more cooked than it should be. Um, not the worst thing I've ever had, but it is, I don't know. Oh, I got I gotta kind of get a couple bites in, but so far the edges are a little too, a little too rough for my palate at the moment. Usually we kind of check back in about halfway through our meal, but honestly, the more I kept eating mine. It did not change at all from the first bite to the last one. It was the same temperature, always the same consistency, the same flavor. So I personally, for me, I felt like there was zero reason to come back and give an update on it. So at the end of the day, it's, I think about in the movie Elf when Will Ferrell gets very excited about the world's best coffee in New York City and, and he takes Zoe Deschanel there and gets all excited to hear her reaction and she's like, it's a crappy cup of coffee. That's what I see like this as. Like, it's not offensive in any way, but it's just a crappy theme park burger. Uh, and that, that's it. I mean, yeah, I could have added the bacon on and went for the aftershock, but like Rhino said, with a name like that, you just taking a chance right away. And plus I saw the bacon, it was just sitting under a heat lamp. So it's not even like it's fresh cooked bacon right off. It's, it's sitting bacon. So uh, in my opinion, the meal here is pretty non-offensive. For the most part, that's what I would say. It's non-offensive, but it's not good by any means. So I do, I do have to say by coming over here rather than Mel's. Mel's was loud and noisy no matter where we went in that restaurant. Here, I feel like we have still, even though more people are coming in, besides the pop music, it's still relatively quiet in here. So it's a nice place to, to kind of hang out if you're trying to have a conversation with your meal too. But yeah, that's, that's kind of my thoughts on it. I walked around, saw some of the decor as well too. I never knew that Doc Brown was inside here, so that was kind of neat. Where? And he's, he's on a wall. We'll do a cutaway to a picture of it right now. And so you can see it, obviously, if you're listening to this, it doesn't matter to you. But despite the odd choice of this being about earthquakes in San Francisco, I get it. It made more sense when Earthquake was right across the way. Uh, but it still, now it just seems kind of morbid. But yeah. obviously, the theming isn't awful. So I, I can't really knock it too hard on that. This is just going to be another place where when I don't come back for another three or four years, if it's still around, I, I won't ever forget why. I am still working my way through my mind. Um, I realized as I was eating it, I pretty much created the Mother Nature Burger from um, Springfield across the way here, um, um, which comes with guacamole on it, and I believe lettuce and tomato. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend this. Like I said, the texture is like a little too rough. This is a little too dry. This patty. I don't know if it like sat out or something like that. But like Craig said, like we saw them making chicken and burgers in there using fresh stuff. So it's not like it's not fresh. I just don't know what happens to it in the process. Also, um, on the theming, yeah. Without Earth, when it made sense when the Earthquake was here, I guess, because you could be like, well, it's themed to that movie. But right now, it's just I hate it because it's themed to a natural disaster, and it's trying to do it in a non-offensive way, which makes light of like earthquakes, which are scary to me. Um, so I really do feel like this area could use a little bit of a redo. Maybe make it something more San Francisco themed. I don't know. Um, but I, I also I probably wouldn't stop here because it's not overly busy in the park today. But that line was a little like too tight for my. For me and the food's really not great. If I was desperate, I would just walk 30 more feet into the Harry Potter, the Wizarding World, into Diagon Alley, get something to eat there, or just cross the way and go to the Simpsons where you can get almost the same food but better themed and better prepared. Um, or even like back up the road to Monsters Cafe. So for me, this is a miss. But I'm gonna eat the rest of this and then go look for that Doc Brown uh, photo. Yes. 
wraps things up here at Richter Burger Company. I think Rhino and I both agree this is a complete skip. Yeah. Uh, bottom of the bottom of the barrel. Uh, power shuts down in the park everywhere, and this is the only place offering food. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, if you want to eat here, I. D you did make eat a, here. you did make a comment though. I would agree with him about the noise level for Mel's yeah. because Mel's was like loud, loud, loud. It was a lot more calm in this area, at least this time of day. Exactly. But at the end of the day, if you are, say, if your kids, you, whatever, is saying, you know what, I just really wanted a cheeseburger, fine, go here, but don't say that we didn't warn you on it. Yeah. Uh, in our opinions, this is both a skip, it is just a filler, so they have more restaurants when the other ones are way too busy to get in and you have to settle for something so yeah that's that's it for that of course if you've eaten here and you enjoy it let us know in the comments below why you do yeah. and because uh, we'd be interested to know in that too so with that being said let's head back to the studio and wrap this whole thing up you know what i just every time we go to universal just seems more fun than the last Sure does. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Absolutely good. So we hope you enjoyed that, and we hope you enjoyed everything. So that's going to do it for this episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. I want to start by thanking Rhino for being here with me oh, today. Thank and, you for having me. And thank you for also going to Universal with me, too. It's always more fun than going by yourself. But that's true of Man, eh, now I like being alone a lot, so <laughs> I can't really say that either. But and then I have to send a big thank you to everyone out there who watched and listened to this. We hope uh, you got. If you didn't help, if we didn't help plan your vacation by knowing that Handel got bad eye surgery from a crooked, swindling man, then we hope you at least got some yeah. some entertainment out of it. Use that one the next time you go to a bar for your trivia night. Or anybody playing that yeah. app? Yeah, do that. So thank you so much to everyone out there. Of course, if you need any more information, head to disunplugged.com, home of our show notes uh, for this show and all the others on the Disunplugged Podcast Network, and uh, you'll be able to find stuff there like links to our email. I said, you know what? I'm actually going to go ahead, go on the record right now, and say next week we are doing an email show. There we go. For this. So now is the time to start sending us emails. Of course, on Facebook, we'll post a link to it. But if you want us to answer your email for next week's show, uh, go ahead and email us, uopodcast at disunplugged.com. Like I said, we'll have a link to that in our show notes as well, too. So uh, and go back to any of our old show notes, and you'll be able to find the link, too. It's very easy to track down. But send us your emails for uh, any questions you might have, and we may answer them live on the show. Well, not live, but we will answer them on the show, and then you will watch it in live real time. So there that is. Now you know what next week's show is about. Mm. Bully. Bully to you. Uh, where was I going with that? I plum for God. Oh, you can also follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Links, 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 links galore. So if you're watching this on YouTube, of course, make sure you are subscribed to us as we always ask you to double check on and make sure you either leave comments, fun little comments for us to read or hit that thumbs up button or do both. That's also fun. Uh, if you're listening to this on iTunes, go ahead, uh, rate and review us as well as subscribe. And, and when you're reviewing us, make sure you write about how good this show used to be and has just completely gone downhill because <laughs> that's always a good one. Uh, <laughs> always love that. It's uh, say that to our face. You won't, or you will, mm. and I'll probably just be like, "Yeah, yeah, you might be right." <laughs> I'm listen. I d I don't lie to myself. That's one thing I've always promised myself. But that's neither here nor there. So thank you so much to everyone again. Uh, we will see you again next week for the next episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. But until then, remember, no resolutions.